name is Seth. Thanks for watching my videos on YouTube at How I Think. And in this series of videos, we're going to be discussing OSPF. And in this very first video, we'll get into uh, the basic configuration of OSPF, how it's set up. And in the other uh, videos, we'll get into more complex multi-area OSPF. We'll get into virtual links, route summarization. So this is the first video in a series on OSPF. OSPF stands for Open Shortest Path First. It is a routing protocol typically used internally in a network along with RIP and uh, EIGRP. These are all internal routing protocols. And in this first video, we're just going to set up a basic configuration. As you can see, we're configuring area zero. Every OSPF configuration will have to have area zero. And as you grow, you can have multiple areas. But the backbone is area zero. You have to have. So I got router one and router two. We're going to be configuring basic area. And on each router, we're going to be configuring a loopback address, an IP address, which is a fake address. And the reason we do that is so when EF does it, it looks for the highest interface IP address if we don't provide a router ID. So if we configure our interfaces first and then configure our OSPF, then it'll go ahead and take that IP address. So to prevent that, we'll go ahead and set up our loopback addresses first and then we can go ahead and configure our interfaces. You can always go in and reset those, but typically that's how it's done. So we'll go ahead and uh, bring up router 1. We'll go ahead and configure that. So I'll go into configuration mode. And I'll type in interface L04 loopback. We'll type in IP address 1.1.1.1. Okay, and we'll go ahead and set up interface FA0 slash 0, and we'll type in the IP address. It's 192.168.2.1.255.255.255.0. No shut. And we'll come over to router 2. We'll go into configuration mode. Interface loopback 0. IP address 2.2.2.2. .2 .2 .2. Interface FA 0 slash 0. IP address 192.168.2.2. .2. No shut. Okay. So now what we'll do is we'll go ahead and set up OSPF. So we'll type router OSPF and then we give it a process ID. One, two, whatever the case may be. I think you have the choices between one and 65,000 different process IDs. These are the number range. So uh, if I say question mark, or it doesn't show us, but um, we have this huge range. So we'll do router OSPF1. And as you can see, we're in the router configuration mode. And here we'll type router ID. And we'll type in network. And the network we're using is 192.168.2.0. And here, instead of doing a subnet mask, you do a wildcard mask, which is the technically the reverse 0.0.0.255. And this will be area 0, as we can see up here. OK. So that's one way of setting up uh, routes within OSPF. Fairly easy. Another way would be to go directly into the um, interface. So for in this case, for example, interface loopback zero. And you can type IP OSPF one. 
area zero. Simple. That's it. We'll come back to sorry, router one. And here we'll do the same thing. Router OSPF one network one ninety two one sixty eight two dot zero zero dot zero dot zero dot two five five Area is zero. Like I showed, now, like I said, I showed you two different ways you can do it. Oh, as you can see, it's, it's already forming adjacencies. See, it's picking it up. And you can say network one dot one dot one dot one zero zero dot zero dot zero dot zero area zero and now if we say show IP OSPF neighbor there you go it is it set up adjacencies show IP OSPF neighbor so here it shows us we're connected to router 1 and here it shows us we're connected to router 2 we can also say show IP OSPF database and this will show us all the link state advertisement that that's being sent back and forth OSPF uses 11 or so different link state advertisement and we'll get into more detail in the subsequent videos but in this very basic uh, setup we're only using uh, LSA 1 and LSA type 2 what this is telling us is that for LSA 1, each router advertises itself. So we can see that here. 1111 is advertising itself, two, and 222 two, two is advertising itself. Okay. So the next one is LSA Type 2, which is similar to Type 1, but it tells us who the DR router is. A de designated router and backup designated router. So LSA type 2 is used to only specify where who the designated router is. So this is LSA type 1. Okay. And this is type 2. And that's telling us this that 222 is the designated router. And we can say show IP OSPF interface brief. And here it's telling us that router 1 is a BDR and if we jump on to router 2 show IP OSPF interface brief it's telling us that router 2 is a DR as this LSA type 2 over here showed us show IP protocol and basically that tells us what's in the what protocol is configured, OSPF protocol is configured. So it gives us the process ID, which is OSPF1 that we used, router ID, 222, which we specified, the network that's in this router ID, or in this OSPF, right now we only have one network, right, area zero, and the loopback addresses. So now if we say ping 1.1.1.1, we get a successful ping. And now if we say show IP route, and we have, as you can see, an OSPF route. And same thing here, show IP route. There we go. We have we have an OSPF route. Fairly easy configuration, very easy to do. Obviously, you can go more into detail. Uh, just for a quick example, we say debug IP OSPF. Hello. You'll see that every few seconds it sends out a hello. A multicast address 
address 224005. OSPF uses 224005 and 224006. And it's saying, hey, are you out there? And then we're going to receive back from 2222 via the, uh, this IP saying yes. And then it ends the process. So uh, it, it does this every three seconds or so. And you can change the variables to play around with that. Okay. So this, in a nutshell, is how to set up a basic OSPF configuration in, in Area 0. In the next video, we'll go into a multi-OSPF area. We'll set up multiple areas in Part 2, and we'll turn on OSPF and we'll see how the uh, routes are being distributed uh, dynamically. Video after that, we'll go ahead and set up uh, virtual links between two different routers spanning several, several different areas. And in the last video in the series, multi-area setup OSPF with routes being injected uh, from an external source, whether that's RIP or EGIRP or whatever the case may be and then we'll see if we can distribute those routes to all of our different areas So stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching and have a good day